Naval warfare of classical antiquity involved battles between galleys. Generally speaking, these were long, shallow draft ships powered primarily by ore. Early designs had been pioneered by the Phoenicians, but soon spread throughout the Mediterranean. The Hellenistic kingdoms and their escalating warfare was a large driver in the further development of these warships. Though the Romans were late to the game, they took to naval warfare aggressively during the Punic Wars and were soon a force to be reckoned with, both on land and at sea. Ships in classical antiquity could vary widely and there would be many means of classifying them. In terms of size, a warship might be considered one of the small ships, Navis Minoris Formae, or one of the large ships, Navis Majoris Formae. In terms of its role, it could be a generic warship, Navis Ornata, a scout ship, Navis Speculatoria, or a flagship, Navis Praetoria. A ship could also be classified according to the number of rowers. There is still much debate about the nature of this classification, but many have taken it to refer to the number of rowers per file that is, the number of rowers in a cross-section regardless of their arrangement. For instance, a bireme would likely have pairs of rowers operating together, while a trireme would have three rowers grouped together, and a quadrireme would have four. Lastly, there might be additional descriptions based on armament. A warship might be considered a fracte, meaning undecked, cataphracte, meaning decked and armored, or strate, meaning armed with a rem, or expedate, meaning stripped for speed. Let us now run through a list of ships which saw use in the Republican Roman Navy. The Lembos was a small, light ship put to sea during the Roman monarchy. Early designs would have had a single bank of around 16 oars and no deck. Eventually, they seem to have been expanded to support two oar banks of up to 50 oars with some sort of fighting platform and the potential for a ram. This craft could be used as a fast scout ship or a courier ship it would also have been proven popular for piracy. The Hemiola was another type of small, light ship that appeared in the early 4th century BC. This ship was also relatively variable and could be seen with or without a deck and a ram. It seems that they had about 15 oars on either side of the deck, but with a longer length and slimmer profile which gave them an edge in speed over other light ships. As such, they would also be useful as scouting vessels and even troop transports. Liburnians were originally a creation of the Lyrian pirates of the Liburni tribe. This was a smaller, light bireme ship which could often be stripped for speed to chase down heavy cargo ships. When the Romans adopted the Liburnian, it would see action as a scout vessel in the fleets of both Pompey and Octavian. Later on during the imperial period, these types of ships were beefed up and saw greater use as actual warships. In this case, they would be fully decked, armored, and equipped with rams. Triremes, commonly known as threes, were the heaviest classification of the small naval ship type. This warship was a mainstay of the Greek fleets and was quickly adopted by the Romans. As the name implies, it had three rowers per file, with three levels of oars which were protected by a deck and armory. Typical triremes had around 170 oars and were about 40 meters long. They could reach a high speed of about 8 knots and hold a steady 4 knots for long periods of time. Properly constructed and equipped, they would serve as fast and nimble warships. Due to their smaller size, however, they were unlikely to carry more than 10 or 20 marines, and thus relied more on ramming than boarding. It should also be noted that transport variants of the trireme existed, which reduced the number of oars to 60 to make room for men and horses in the back. The quadrireme, or four, was initially developed by the Carthaginians and was very popular with the navies of the Hellenistic world. The Romans classified them as the lowest rank of their large ships. They were useful in this capacity because they retained the speed of lighter ships while also being more heavily armored for combat. These ships could hold a capacity of around 70 marines and were sometimes equipped with towers and side screens. The quadrireme was used during the Punic Wars and also made up a large portion of Sextus Pompey's fleet at the Battle of Nolacus during the Roman Civil Wars. The Quinquirum, or Five, was first invented by Dionysius, the tyrant of Syracuse, in his rivalry with the Carthaginians. It was around 45 meters long and stood 3 meters above the waterline, which allowed it to overlook smaller ships. The Quinquirum had 90 oars on either side and was crewed by roughly 300 rowers. Its large deck could support up to 120 marines for boarding action, while the armored prow was equally effective at ramming. This ship 
would see major use during the 4th century BC and was one of the heaviest warships at the time, often serving as a flagship for the fleets of triremes and quadriremes. The Romans were lucky enough to capture one during the early stages of the First Punic War and set about mass producing it. Roman quinquiremes were developed for close combat and had deep ore boxes with extra protection against missiles. Fighting castles and artillery were also mounted for extra strength. Alternatively, the quinquirum might also be stripped for speed and classified as a light ship. The fives would be the reliable workhorse of the Roman navy and saw extensive use throughout the Republican period. Hexariums were even heavier armored warships equipped with rams, towers, and artillery. These sixes often served as flagships for Roman commanders, from the time of Regulus during the Punic War to the time of Sextus Pompey during the Civil Wars. At Actium, they would be among Octavian's heaviest warships, but would be the lightest of Antony's huge eastern warships. Ships larger than sixes were rare in the western Mediterranean, but featured heavily in the fleets of the eastern successor kingdoms. These huge warships were not necessarily much taller than other ships, but were generally wider, longer, and more heavily constructed. They could take a beating in battle and deal a large amount of damage. A Deceres, for instance, might hold around 200 heavy marines and archers, as well as at least 6 ballista. At Actium, Antony's navy would be comprised of 8s, 9s, and 10s. Though they were undermanned and ultimately defeated, it would require multiple ships from Octavian's fleet to take even one of these out. Even more monstrous vessels, such as the Forty, built by Ptolemy IV, with 4,000 rowers and 2,850 marines, were seen around the Mediterranean. But these leviathans never saw action and were not a part of the Roman navy. Initially, the Romans had little experience with naval warfare and relied on their naval allies at Locri, Tarentum, Elea, and Naples. These ships would have been built and supplied by the numerous coastal communities who were more accomplished shipwrights. During the First Punic War, however, the Romans decided to kick their naval ambitions into high gear and commissioned a huge new fleet of over 100 ships. Polybius says that production required 165 woodcutters, carpenters, and metal workers working full-time on each of the ships. Apparently 20,000 men toiled away and completed the construction in just three months. It is likely that the Romans commissioned Greek carpenters who would have known how to choose, cut, and shape the wood for the construction project. In addition, the existing arsenals in Magna Graecia could have served as workshops. Down the road, Roman ships would be built in their own harbors and large-scale shipyards. The construction of galleys at this time involved the assembly of the hull, followed by the interior and the top deck. There were two main ways to construct the hull. The first involved laying down the central backbone of the ship from bow to stern, followed by adding the ribs to the hull. Planking would then be installed over the ribs to create a smooth, watertight surface. The second method involves starting with the backbone, then constructing the sides using hull planks, and then finally adding the ribs on afterwards. Many ships from the 3rd century BC onwards would also add ore boxes to the hull. This was done to strengthen the design, make more room inside the ship, and improve ventilation for the rowers. Next, the rowing benches, oars, and interior were installed. The disposition of rowers varied greatly, even among ships of the same classification. For instance, a conquirum had five rowers and a cross-section, but these could be assigned to one or multiple oars at one or multiple levels. It is believed that the Carthaginians had three banks of oars where two rowers were positioned at the top and middle while a single rower was at the bottom. This method allowed for a slimmer design but required skilled rowers at all levels. It is believed that some navies with more manpower than skill would have instead assigned all five men to just one or two oars. This meant that each oar team only required one skilled rower to lead while the rest simply supplied power. However, such a design resulted in a wider ship, though this might also have been an advantage as it created a larger fighting platform above. After the rowing components were installed, a wooden structure with the canopy deck and side screening was added for protection. In the future, such cataphracting of ships was the responsibility of the captain rather than the shipbuilder because they would know better what was needed during battle. Along the way, Masks would be erected, along with the sails, rigging, steering oars, and anchors. We also know that safety equipment and pumps made their way onto the ships. Finally, 
Large amounts of work would also go into decorating the ships, including carvings, statues, painted eyes, and detailed bronze restrata. The analysis of shipwrecks has also revealed that there are instances of markings on timbers, clearly indicating the stages of construction. This shows that there was some early form of mass production taking place, where pre-marked templates were used to create standard designs and speed up construction. Once the ships were built, they would be held in harbors or covered sheds, where they could easily be maintained until they were actually needed. War gear, such as boarding bridges, fighting towers, and artillery were generally only temporary fixtures, which would be added at the last minute. In future videos, we will dive into the tactics and history surrounding the Roman Republican fleet. I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more.